on it and and I was preaching as I am now and this, at, at, right at that very moment I was speaking I also was caught up into heaven now it's a vision of course regardless of what MacArthur says people do have visions have you had a vision without a vision you perish so uh I, was, I didn't miss a word of my sermon. Margaret didn't even know that I had the experience. They'd talk about it for I still don't like to talk about it. But I was caught up and I was right there, not a rerun, watching God create Lucifer. Or you say, Roy, that had to be a rerun. No. That's why we have to change our concept of God. When we get to heaven, we can watch God create everything. Because in heaven, there is no such thing as time. The moment now is forever. Now, for time to exist, God had to push his light. Now, remember there, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth darkness upon the face of the deep the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and then God said let there be light so light according to Einstein he, we have all that proven now light came as God's created part of his personality and being as a light came out into the what you'd call world or no world or heavens or uh, whatever you wherever light is so when light came out from God it came out so it could form a wheel now Ezekiel said God spoke there and Ezekiel said he saw a wheel in the middle of a wheel and a man called me one day from Washington DC and I'll get back to the story here in just a moment in my vision and he uh, he said Roy my pastor died and he went to heaven and God said I'm going to send you back and teach you some things and I'm going to send you back and he said while he was there the Lord said to him I am going to show you the difference or the relativity of time and light very few people God said have ever seen this then they got a hold of one of my books in the packet here and uh, said, Roy, we know that you saw that. You're one of those that God said very few people have seen it. My pastor wants to meet you and so forth and so on. Now, I've studied this down through the years and I've had no reason to change it. Einstein saw that if you would begin to travel faster and faster and faster, time would begin to slow down. Okay? So that if one could say uh, travel 87% the speed of light in a spaceship that would go 87% and go out 20 years turn the spaceship around come back having been gone from earth a total of 40 years step out of his spaceship the wife he left the same age he was is now twice as old then they say if you could special Step, step it up, make the spaceship to go faster, 99 and 99 hundredths, the speed of light. These are all mathematics. Gone in the spaceship 30 years, turn your spaceship, it's Earth's calculations, turn your spaceship around and came back a total, gone a total of 60 years, you would have found that while you were gone flying 99 and 99, 99 hundredths the speed of light, gone out 60 years of Earth's time, Five million years would have passed on the earth. Now the scientists say, would time stop if you went the speed of light? And you have to say yes. Because in God's presence there can be no time. That's why God pushed it out from him. So that if you could sit where God sits, wheel, in the middle of a wheel, you could look down and see God created Adam, Adam and Eve. Right now. That's where I'm going to get a headache here if you don't stop. <laughs> Noah's day. 
You could sit where God sits and you could see Jesus Christ on the cross. You could see us right here. See exactly how you're dressed. Wouldn't you like to look ahead and see if you made it? John the Beloved did. In the book of Revelation, he saw a number that no man could number. All of us were there. He saw that. Now, if you can get a hold of that concept, then you can understand why when I was lifted up, I watched God create Lucifer. It's not over your head, is it? But while we're on the subject, you want to know why you backslide, why you get indifferent, and many times why you don't get healed and all the things that happen? Because it is not God predestinating junk on you. God sees you. Now, God right now, we, we could pray a prayer. We could line you up and lay hands upon you and you say, I believe I received my healing. And God cannot help but hear what you say there. I believe I received my healing. He can hear what you say two months down the road. I thought I was healed, but guess I'm not. Oh, I'm going to serve you and love you, Lord, all the days of my life. He looks ahead and see you backslidden. Are you with me? Well, we've got to understand, folks, it's not Sunday to Sunday stuff. It's day to day stuff. It's not what I said yesterday that's important. It's what I'm saying today that makes in yesterday's statement important. I never said that before. Write that down. That sounds pretty good to me. What, my, what I say today may not be a great statement. He hears the contradictory statement down the road. So in the beginning, God, God created. So when the Lord called me up and he's creating Lucifer and a vision is something you interpret the rest of your life. Seconds goes by and yet, I don't know how long it took God to create Lucifer. You know, try a billion years. Who, no, who cares? Because there's no time there. So God let me step into that no time zone. And I watched him and I said, God, wow, he's beautiful. Now remember, Lucifer, the anointed cherub, the one that covereth means over God's throne, was probably one of God's first created beings and one that would lead worship out of all the other angels that God could create. And I, I said something like in my human terminology and ignorance, I said, God, wow, he's beautiful. I guess God understands wow. Why? Awesome. Uh, maybe you better not uh, give him so much beauty. I think he's going to fall because of the beauty you give him. God said, I'm God, and I cannot create less than perfectly. Yeah, don't, 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 don't give him a will. God said, if I don't give him a will, he's not a perfect creature. God didn't make robots. They were squeaked by, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oil that one. <laughs> the only time, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I love you, Jesus, means anything, it's when you say it by your will means something that you came out here tonight. It means something to God that you came out here tonight. Amen. You took your will and you got away from the TV and all the other stuff and you're here. God has noticed that. And then I said, well, you know what he's going to do? And God says, yes. I know. And then just in fleeting split seconds we're in the Garden of Eden and I know all that happened to Lucifer. I mean, I've got knowledge of the earth. I've got knowledge up there. And here we are, and God is creating Adam. Right out of that ground, folks. I mean, he scooped you up like a bunch of mud. We're all sons and daughters of Adam and Eve, aren't we? God made us from the ground, and thank God that's where we're going to go back. Don't care what they do to this old bod. 
burn it if you want to. Put it in the ground if you want to. Feed it to the fish if you want to. It's going back to the earth. That's where it came from. But that's not the body going to heaven. The body put in the grave is not the body that goes up there. So it doesn't matter what they do to you. So I'm just saying, I don't care if they bury me, burn me. You can walk by my casket and say, Hicks, you lucky stiff, you. <laughs> God is creating Adam. Well, I said, man, yeah, I, I'm anxious to get to heaven and see some of these people. Be wonderful. Uh, there was a line. There, somebody was in heaven and they said they wanted to go up and talk to Adam and Eve, but they had a big long line waiting. Everybody wanted to talk to them. <laughs> but they said, my time came. And uh, I said, Lord, God, uh, God, we're going through this again. We're going through this again. Don't give him a will. God said, if I don't give him a will, he's not perfect. You know what he's going to do? Yes. Yes. Are you going to come back with me now? After Lucifer, the angels, Rebellion in heaven. Then God creates a man from the earth. And God's going to be good to him. Everybody say God's a good God. You know he can't be any other way. God loves. How many, how many believe God loves you? He also loves Hitler. He loves the Arabs. As well as he loves the Jews. I can't get a hold of that, but I believe it. Somebody said we don't have power to comprehend it. We have power to believe it. Amen. He loves. Now then, Elohim. Not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost as we know them now. But unity in Trinity. And one writer said, needing nothing they can create. Because they were infinitely happy and infinitely content. But then why did they create? So somebody will get to know how wonderful they are. God didn't create hell for people. God doesn't want people going to hell. God doesn't want to see you sick. God wasn't, doesn't want to see you discouraged. He's a God of love. Now, I'm going to have to get to where I'm kind of closing this part and we'll finish it as we go along. When an infinite God, Elohim, three in one, now stay with me now, saw that the angels would fall, certain percentage, saw that mankind would do what he did, they knew, they knew sin would happen. They knew man would fall. They knew all of that. But God created perfectly and gave them all a will. Aren't you glad you have a will? Now, I'm going to use a word, and I guess maybe I'll come up with a better one, but I just got into this in the last few weeks, and I, it's not refined yet, so forgive me. When the Trinity, three in one, saw that whatever they created were turned out to be one glorified mess of humanity, like you and I, and like the Hitlers, huh? and the rapists, the child molesters, and the murderers, and an earth in rebellion because Satan touched it. That earthquake wasn't sent by God. God doesn't send the, the, uh, the floods. That's an earth that's cursed because Satan touched it. One of the earthquakes God ever sent was to get somebody out of prison. Didn't hurt anybody and the whole jail fell, fell apart. Amen. When they saw what they would create would end up being a terrible thing that it was and yet thank God he saw some of us. Hallelujah. That would make it and spend eternity with him. It's worth it. 
I'm glad he did it. But when they saw that it was going to be a glorified failure, mess, mass of rebellion and sin, and God never intended that there be ten commandments to the old covenant. God intended that all the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would be like Abraham. Abraham didn't need any thou shalt nots. It was his kids. Turned out to be a bunch of hoodlums. Had a brother who was spiritual and they tried to kill him. Called Joseph. Well, let's don't be here all night long, Roy. It's a mess. Then they said, if we create this, then one of us, one of the three, will have to redeem the mess. Pay the price by becoming one of them. Are you still with me? Quiet in heaven. Ought to get quieter here. One of them, one of the three, co-equal, no father, no son, no Holy Spirit, just three eternal beings called God. One of them said, I will go. I will go and die. I will as God die. Then the other two members must have said, because this is what happened, then you, pardon the word again now, because you'll understand this word, you then be the one that creates the mess. The other member must have said, I will be the worker. You speak it, I'll bring it to pass. The other third member must have said, I then will make you the one that creates into a man. I will father you. Jesus is the one. Everybody say Jesus. Became, say it. The creator. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same as in the beginning with God. All things were created by him. And nothing was created but what was created by him. He is and became the creator. And we haven't been taught that. Confirmed so powerfully by Colossians and by the first chapter. Not only did Jesus crack Christ create, but he upholds all things by the word of his power. So as Jesus said, let there be light, and the Holy Spirit made it light. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit becomes the worker of the Trinity. Aren't you glad? The wonderful, sweet Holy Spirit. Everything the other two ever says, he makes come to pass. Now then, there are what you call three assignments. Everybody say assignments. Father will become the Father. Jesus Christ is the Creator. And the Holy Spirit becomes the Worker. Now the other two members must have said, Now, we well, thank you, Holy Spirit, for volunteering to, tear, to bring all that to pass down there, but we don't want them down there to under, misunderstand you, so we will tell them that sin against the Father and Son will be forgiven, but the sin against you, Holy Spirit, will not be pardonable. Sin against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, so don't try to make, think of just one pardonable sin. Any sin against the Holy Spirit is unpardonable. Better appreciate him and treat him like the dove that he is and the power that he is, but make it awesome. Amen. So Jesus Christ became the creator and created the heavens and the earth 
and the sun, the moon, and the stars. He's the one that created the angels and because it was God. So when it says God, all three of them were in on it. Say, say all three. But see, Jesus is the one that actually did it. So in the Old Testament, Jesus is called Father. Anybody know the verse in Isaiah 9, 6? Unto us, come on. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God and Everlasting. Oh, you've never been taught that, have you? Do you know that Jesus Christ was David's Lord? Do you know there are seven redemptive names for Jehovah and all of them are names of Jesus? Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the one that supplies. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. And so Jesus is the one that put up with a mess in the old covenant. About time he got it. He's father in the Old Testament. That's the only God they knew. And it, 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 go, go back and read this sometime. And Jesus knowing full well that one day he's going to become one of them. Awesome. So he brings them along. Boy, they rebelled. He wants to get rid of them. Moses said, no, if you don't go with us, I'm not going. You take us. You go with us. Or I'll just... Get rid of them and make you a great nation. No, he said, you made a promise. You got to keep it. So he's stuck with the old crowd in the Old Testament. Boy, murmurs, complainers. You make a law, they could break it before you made it. That's what happened on, when Moses came down out of the mountain. They'd already broken the law he made. Why did God give so many laws to Israel so they would at least be sexually pure? Because God could not be born of somebody that had a sexual disease. And you go back and read your Old Testament and you'll understand more and more about the cleanliness that God made Israel to have. Men couldn't touch their wives on certain times of the month, but the heathen do. And so finally the time came. Finally they had to be scattered abroad, all of Israel, and God would bring them back again. And the remnant came back. And so Jesus, after 4,000 years, we know it, from Adam, goes to the Father. Now, he's not Father yet. You're not a Father till you're a Father. Do you understand that? That doesn't give you a headache, does it? Huh? That's simple, isn't it? So Jesus goes to God the Father, that will become God the Father, and said, we are now ready for me to make the sacrifice. And remember what he said? A body thou hast prepared me. I have come to do thy will, O God. For you delight, delight not in animal sacrifices, but a body. And so God, the other member of the Trinity, as we know, the assignment, God the Father now is going to take an equal member of the Trinity called Jesus, the Creator. Minimize, take him, this is God the Father now, the one that's going to be, takes him, awesome to think about it, and makes him into the size of a man's sperm. Can you imagine that? What, how did God do that? Here's the creator, ready to die for the creation that was created, and God the Father takes him and makes the sperm of God. And the Holy Spirit takes that sperm and visits a little gal called and puts that sperm in her pure womb. Now there's only two up there. One's down here. Oh, folk, we could stay here all night long. Awesome to think about it. God so loved the world. God's trinity, folks. 
gave the only begotten son to die for the mess. We're it. We're the mess. Now Jesus, I heard a, in fact, the Word of Faith guy, and I was embarrassed for him to say it. On national TV, I said, oh, oh, you can't say that. He said, Jesus Christ was only a man on this earth. He wasn't God. And I said, how far have we gone treating our Lord? Books are written that you don't pray to him. I want you to leave in here with one thing tonight. This awesome God you serve invested everything in one person the person of Jesus Christ so Jesus is now 100% God on the earth but 100% man don't try to explain it you, know, you can't do it can you okay get ready to end now you know folks when he was Mary said to a letter written to another person back then. They have a lot of letters that you get in a book. And uh, she said, from the time that Jesus could talk, he could quote the Old Testament by heart. I guess so. He's the Word. <laughs> and didn't like it when people misquoted it. And of course added to it. 12 years old, remember? Boy, did he shock those dudes. No, that's not what it says. What do you mean it's not what it says? Quote it for me. Get the, get the roll out and unroll it and scroll it. You know, oh, you're right, boy. <laughs> yeah. Creator you're talking to there, fellow. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful that he always knew I must be about my father's business? He did nothing when he saw the father do He's a helpless man just like you and I because he chose to be that way. Hey, folk, one thing he left behind, he had to be, I'm sure glad he did, he left his glory behind. Can you imagine that baby being born by Mary in that manger with his glory? Nobody could see what it was because the glory would be so bright. No, he laid that aside. Stepped out of deity but was still deity subject to his father what's one of the first things he did create <laughs> I guess he could stop creating they needed what wine so he created wine out of first act create man has no eyeballs he makes some they need food probably about a truckload I mean a, a car a train Railroad car, maybe 100 cars. How much food does it take to feed 5,000 men plus women? Took a little boy's lunch and created enough food for everybody with 12 baskets full left over. Now we must come to an end because we, we, we have to do, go on. To, we've got to take this on tomorrow, right where we're going to put a period here pretty soon. Listen to me carefully. When it came time for our Creator, to come and do what he said he would do. I will go. A body that has prepared me. So now the creator is in a physical body. I'm going to say this to you, bound to that physical body from the standpoint that he did become a human being. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, he begins to get a little idea of what he signed up for volunteered for oh father he said if it's possible let this cup pass from me let's <laughs> don't go that way can't there be another way listen to me folk the creator that created man is about to die now don't even try to figure that out folks don't listen to somebody try to tell you how it happened. Nobody can. But the Creator volunteered to die, right? Now He's going to die. 
And he says, Father, can't we get out of this? No, he knows better than that. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. That's the thing we started out with. And so he goes to the whipping post, which he did not have to do. Don't ever let anybody tell you Jesus took 39 stripes. That was a Jewish law. The Romans had no law, and they tried to beat him to death and beat on him all night long. If it hadn't been for a, a servant, some say it was a black man, an African that carried the cross, Jesus would have never got there. He almost died. But he did say this, no man can take my life. I have to volunteer it. You know, I don't know why the Roman Catholics and all these people down through the years and some charismatic get mad at the Jews for killing Jesus. They didn't. Couldn't. You better thank God. Anyhow, <laughs> if you believe he killed him, thank God somebody did. But he didn't kill him. He became a sacrifice. Because he loved you. God the creator who created you. Is now going to die. And sacrifice for you. So you can come and see how wonderful they are. All eternity. Hallelujah. All eternity. We'll be learning how wonderful they are. And so Jesus. Talks about Mary. Talks about John. He talks it to the thief. He said I thirst. He seven cries on the cross and he came to one that said my God, my God he meant Father and Holy Spirit because he had the Holy Spirit without measure but he's gone too he looks up no Father and no Holy Spirit he's just now a man huh God man created specially by God the Father to be a God in a man's body and yet die as a man and die as God. So you and I could sit here tonight and praise him. Amen? And then the whole sins of the human race were laid on him. He became a sacrifice. He did not become sin. That's a mistranslation in your King James Bible. He became a sin offering. Like a scapegoat. You hear me? And the Bible in the Old Testament says, Thou shalt see my soul a sacrifice for sins. Hebrew talks about the sacrifice of Jesus becoming a sin sacrifice. He never sinned, folks. You hear that? He never sinned or he couldn't have died. You couldn't die for yourself. He died for others. And all of our sins and sicknesses, failures, faults, everything we'll ever commit, future, past tense, it doesn't matter when you'll do it, it's done, it's taken care of, it was put on him. And God never sees Roy Hicks's faults. My wife sees them. And I see hers, but he doesn't see them. You can't see anything through the blood. Hallelujah. He went down there, took our sins, stopped on his way and preached to the Old Testament Jews. <laughs> Here I am, your creator. Glory to God. I'm David's Lord. I paid the price. You can come with me. Let them out of there. Graves are open and the saints of the New Testament in Jerusalem saw the Old Testament saints marching into heaven. Hallelujah. It's over with. It's done. It's settled. And then the Bible talks about all the promises of God are in Christ. God the Father has translated us or transferred us from the kingdom of darkness can you finish it for me into the kingdom of what huh his dear son dear son this is my son no wonder he could be a proud father huh 
That's quite something God the Father did. Create a son and then have that only son die. No, it wasn't a failure. It was the original plan. And so Jesus was resurrected from the dead. First one to be gotten from the dead that had a glorified body. All the other saints lived in the old, same old body. But Jesus had a glorified body. That's like you and I are going to have. Amen. Our biggest, biggest weakness is not comprehending, understanding what it cost God to get us to him. If you ever get a hold of that, you won't backslide anymore. And if you get a hold of that, you'll stop. If you're willfully sinning now, you'll stop right now. Because if you got his seed in you, you can't sin. So if you're sinning, this forget God's seed is not in you. Oh, you can, you never lose your will when you got saved. Amen. If you want to go back, you can go back. You can wipe the whole thing off. Say, I made a mistake. I'm going to go back there and sin. And go ahead. Just don't take anybody with you. Do it yourself if you want to. And go to hell if you want to. But as far as God's concerned, when he paid the price for you, it's over. Just keep your will on God's side and not on man's side. And will to serve him. Amen. I have to put a period there. And I just got started. Because we've got to learn about our confusion of praying to whom we pray to. I mean, the way I hear God the Father, it, he, he's in total charge of the kingdom. I hear it all the time. No, he gave all of it to his son. Wouldn't a proud father do that? Huh? Doesn't a proud father like to see his son have, have his talents plus? Amen. So God said, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Now, everything God did is invested in Jesus Christ. And everything in you and I have is in Jesus Christ. And Jesus said it the best. I will not pray to the Father for you. John 16, 28. I will not pray to the Father for you. Jesus never has to turn to the Father and pray for you. He may pray for the world, but he don't pray for you. Are you still listening to me? Don't go to sleep on me now. I'm shooting down one of the things you've heard all your life. Jesus said, I will not, what it meant to say, I will not ever have to pray to God the Father for you. Hear the, hear the Bible now, not traditions. For the Father himself loves you. So why would somebody say, Father, don't forget I died. Father said, hey, I love them. You don't have to tell me, I love them. Jesus said, I will not have to pray to the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you. Everybody say, he loves me. Amen. Say, nobody has to pray to him. Say it. For me. Because he loves me. Now, listen to the Bible. Because Jesus said, you love me. Everybody say, God the Father loves me. Because I love Jesus and believe that he, Jesus, came from God. That's all he's asked you to do. To believe that he, Jesus, came from God. Let's stand up. Oh, you're such a wonderful group. I think we ought to send out for Big Macs. And some milkshakes. We'll be here all night long and still not get the story told. I want you to leave here tonight if you're backslidden. I want you to repent that you've treated your Lord, your Creator in such a sorry way. And tell Him you're sorry, amen. Bow our heads before Him just a moment here. I believe while I am up here and you're out there, are people here that came walking in this building tonight. You love God. We don't doubt that. But you are willfully sinning. And after you've heard the story tonight and rehearsed it again, the very old story that's told over and over and never get tired of hearing how God so loved the world he gave that you need to repent. You're backslidden. You're cold. You're lukewarm. You're not where you ought to be. We're so glad you're here. There's not a person on this platform condemns you. 
there's not a person in this audience are going to look at you and think anything less of you. In fact, we're going to admire you very much. If you will just say right now, Dr. Hicks,